Welcome back. Today's market quote is courtesy of Wharton professor Jeremy Siegel, who told us last week he's looking for another big year for stocks. We had 16% return last year, a very good year. I think we're going to match that and even do better this year. So that does mean an all-time high for the S&P 500. Well, not everyone agrees with the professor, though. Greg Peters, Morgan Stanley's chief global cross-asset strategist, is looking for gains, just not here in the U.S. He joins us live now from New York City. Sir, welcome. It's good to have you on the show, Greg. Thanks for having me. Uh, what's wrong with the professor's view? Well, there's nothing wrong, wrong with it per se, but we live in a relative world, and I think the opportunity set is far better outside the U.S., uh, and so that takes you to emerging markets, uh, specifically uh, uh, Asia, uh, and it takes you to Europe. And it's really a twofold reason. One is valuation. Valuations are cheaper outside the U.S. And then secondly, and more importantly, earnings. And so the big concern that we have in the fly in the ointment, so to speak, as far as being bullish on stocks, is the earnings outlook. And we see a very flattish to down earnings outlook uh, for the U.S. And uh, it's hard to imagine valuations getting much richer as a consequence. It is, it is amazing how uh, you can have so many different views uh, of a marketplace, right? That P Professor Siegel was even talking to us about multiple expansion, uh, whereas when I say those words to you, your, your thought is, is what? Well, look, I mean, that can happen. That happened in uh, the second half of last year. And so that's, that's the implied bet that he's making in that earnings don't matter, that the Fed is easy, and that the markets will continue to rip higher irrespective of fundamentals. I take a slightly different view there. Uh, indeed, that may happen. That's what makes markets. But I, I think it's an easier and a better risk-reward, actually, outside the U.S. So I know we're laser-focused on what's going on here, but I think the better trade is outside side where earnings look a little better and valuations as a starting point are better. Let's let's go specifics then. Where, where let's take Europe first. Uh, where exactly in Europe would you invest your money right now? Well, on Europe is a threefold approach that we have. It's basically uh, the sovereign market, uh, the corporate debt market, and the equity market. And all three of those actually look attractive to us, particularly in the periphery. And so what we see is that uh, the companies and the regions are being penalized for where they reside and the names, not the fundamentals. And you see that most clearly actually in the corporate bond market, where a lot of the peripheral corporates trade very cheap relative to their fundamentals and relative to the core. So I, what I think that's a good example of, of kind of that disconnect that I expect to converge uh, in 2013, and the same could be said on the equity side. Let's go China. Uh, are, are you of the view that we're, we're not getting a hard landing and, and that any kind of landing, we, maybe we won't get any landing? What, what do you think? Well, we'll get some kind of landing. Hopefully it's not a hard one. Uh, no, uh, I mean, we have a, a pretty uh, confident view that uh, China is stabilizing. I uh, feel like the weakness that we experienced uh, second half of last year is somewhat behind us. Growth isn't going to be what we witnessed the past couple of years or so. Well, it's going to be lower, but it's going to be more sustainable. And so China is a story. And in fact, circling back to the U.S. and Europe, we actually think there's better ways to take, take China risk outside of China. China, and when that's in the U.S. and actually in Europe. So it's a China derivative play, if you would. Interesting. Greg, it's good to talk to you. Thanks so much for spending some time with us on Halftime today. Thank you. All right. Greg Peters of Morgan Stanley. Murph? Yeah, I think uh, he's right with the China rebound, but I'm going to disagree with him. I think U.S. is the place to invest right now still. To say that Europe is in a better position than uh, the U.S., sure, you, you can talk about valuation. Stocks aren't as cheap as they were after a 16 percent run up last year. Yes, but I think the U.S. economy is being undervalued. A point to housing, $1.4 trillion is the amount that U.S. housing will increase this year. I think that's going to be a big follow through construction, uh, and I expect the U.S to outperform again. Joey? I, I think the U.S. continues to, to do well, and I think the ultimate indicator right now is where volatility is. Volatility is just incredibly cheap. It remains. Uh, insurance can be provided to protect your portfolio. I, I don't see the overall concerns that people may have for the market itself. Weiss? 
Europe is far from a slam dunk. We got news on Germany, and the German economy, GDP, is contracting. It was down half percent. Now, to put it in perspective, in 2011, it was up 3 percent. In 2012, it was up 0.7 percent. They're the engine for growth there. So I'm not so sure it's going to work out for you in the first half of the year. For Europe, I don't think it's undervalued, and it's had a great run. I'd go into the U.S. All right. Well, two major banks report earnings tomorrow. Much of the conversation we're having today certainly directed towards what's going on with the banks, what their earnings could mean for what the market does in the very near term. J.P. Morgan, Goldman, ahead of the market tomorrow. Let's take our positions. Joe T., you take yours. Well, I mean, my position is long Goldman Sachs. It's been that way for a while. It's been long Morgan Stanley. It's been that way for a while. I like the capital market plays here. I keep hearing the same tired analysis from all the banks, uh, banking analysts that, that will, will present. And when you look at where the street is, the average price target on Goldman right now, I believe, is 136. Most of them have hold ratings. So I think the street is getting it wrong. I think from a trading standpoint and an investment standpoint, both Morgan Stanley and Goldman, the tide is turned. You want to own them again, their investments again, and their trades. Big Doc, the virtual Doc, what's your trade? Uh, I, my favorite, the one that I really saw some fast money into today, was Morgan Stanley on Friday. So I know you're talking about JPM and uh, Goldman Sachs, like both of those. But the one where we saw a lot of fast money trade was the weekly options in Morgan Stanley. And again, these are the options that are something or nothing. It's almost like a binary bet at this point because they expire Friday.